right, we're with Ren Tubergen, who does the, he's the scientist behind how the Vortex uh, works. And I wanted to do a video so that he can talk to us about the science behind how it works and how it compares to a gas afterburner. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it over to Ren and uh, let us know how this thing works. Yeah, so effectively what we're doing is we're taking in the inlet exhaust from, from any roaster and that's gonna come in like a standard cyclone in the side and enter and start to circulate. And then what's unique about ours is we use a, a water spray that goes in through six nozzles. Three are located around the equator and three are located on the top here, here, and in the back. And what those nozzles do is they provide um, cooling water that ev we have evaporative cooling taking place and that takes the heat out of the system and allows the oil, the coffee oils that are in that smoke to coalesce into water droplets. Once they're, or not water droplets, but into oil droplets. Once that's an oil droplet, then there's a difference in buoyancy between the air and the oil droplet and the centrifugal force of a cyclone, the same way that it's separating out the chaff and the dust, that cyclone will separate out the oil droplets. They drop into the water where they're, they will remain in the water and they'll just, that water continues to be reused and um, they'll remain there. At the end of the day, those are able to be poured down the drain like a gray water um, that is basically similar to throwing out the end of your cup of coffee. That, that water goes right down the drain to be treated in a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the bacteria love that. It's a good cup of coffee for them. That is great. So, so this, can, this is different. So an afterburner, you know, you're, we're burning gas, right? We're burning the particulate. Correct. So Correct. when you burn the particulate, that also has, it creates its own emissions, right? Yes, it does. Um, what's different about an afterburner is an afterburner is taking those oils and the, that afterburner is burning those oils off. So you do that by heating the oils up to 1400 degrees commonly. We've just had a customer come by and talk about, they have to show their records that they're constantly operating their afterburner at 1400 degrees. Not only does that burn off the oil and create its own exhaust, its own product of, of combustion, but you're burning a lot of natural gas to get to that state where you've got that kind of heat that can support that. So that's an expensive operation. Yeah, and what we were concerned about looking at solutions for our coffee roasters is environmentally, you know, gas consumption, cooking anything or doing is, is going to is getting more pressure, more pressure. Yes. And this does away with that. Talk about the cost of operation because that was one of the things I was really impressed with. What does it cost to operate this thing in a day? So, and I'll start out with with kind of laying a background and putting it in context. So we partnered with San Franciscan, not to throw out your competitor, but they're. Uh, for this size of uh, Vortex, this is a great matchup. So with their 25 pound unit, um, what we found was that their cost of roasting was about $10 per thousand pounds. The cost oh, wow. of treating the exhaust was $35 yes. per thousand pounds. Right. And the cost of operating the Vortex to clean the exhaust was 48 cents. Yes, okay, so that's a big difference. It's a big difference. That's a big it's, difference. it's almost in a different, yeah, ballpark. Yeah, so, you know, in our roasters, one of the things we dealt with was we used a lot of air. So you yes. have one of our roasters you're testing. Yes, it. I do. We I used, have one in my we lab. We use a lot of air, ambient air to cool down the exhaust to be able to run it in. So we use way more CFM than we need. Right. So we're going to be doing some more testing and, uh, well, and that is raising how the gas temperature, yeah. lowering the CFM, because it does away with the... Uh, the worries about fire. Well, you know? and, and that is functionally how my system has to operate. Whatever you're sending in, I have to get that gas temperature, that exhaust temperature below 110 degrees to really make sure that I've given the oils a chance to coalesce out so right. that they get, so that they form into a droplet, into the liquid, and so get separated. The gas becomes a droplet, centrifugal force pushes it to the outside, right. goes if, through the Venturi cyclone. Yeah, if it stays as a vapor, if that gas stays as a vapor because the exhaust stream stays at an elevated temperature, then that just gets carried along by the air because they're of roughly the same buoyancy. The, the, the oil vapor is slight, it's a bigger molecule, so it's got slightly heavier weight, but the buoyancy difference isn't enough to get it to drop out. Now, side effect from all of that is, as I, if this were a normal cyclone and I were running that gas straight out with the oil vapor in it, then as that 
exhaust stream cools just in the ducting in the rest of your building, those oils do coalesce out and they line the inside of your ducting of the chimney as it passes out of the building uh -huh. and creates, we all know, you need to clean that out periodically yeah, right. because it continues to build up. This is eliminating that problem. We've had customers who have run their system for quite a while and they, they no longer clean out their they ducting. They don't have to clean the ducting. You're not running annual thing. maintenance on your duct. Yeah. yeah, which if you're a responsible coffee roaster and safe, you clean your ducting all the time because you will have a fire if you don't do that. And this so. virtually, again, cold, cold, 110 degrees. So that we yeah. may not consider that to be cold, um, but that is not where we're going to start a fire. This is a right. the water or the exhaust coming out of this is at 110 degrees and 100% humidity. And so we're not getting a fire to start in that. Right. So, okay, that was a great explanation. I wanted our customers to understand a little bit more how it works because we're really excited about the smaller version coming out for our existing roasters. And we're going to be doing some testing on that. So yes. we can lower that yeah. CFM, um, not worry about the exhaust gas temperature going out and make that thing up. So. Stay tuned and we'll send you more information as it becomes available. Thank you.